Ten years from now, you're still 15. A hundred, maybe 17. Eat well. Stay young. Live long. Hey guys, Brandon here, and as always, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a comment below. All those things really help this channel continue to grow, and thanks again for watching. Rebecca Ferguson is somehow simultaneously a queen and a woman of the people. She's played royalty, she's wielded power and authority, and every time she models a coat or something, I'm like, I'm like scared, like she's gonna off with my head or something, I don't know. I'm intimidated by beautiful women. She also has a disarming authenticity when discussing her career. She's not afraid to admit that, yes, she has an ego. Like when she insisted to director Denis Villeneuve that she would appreciate it if the audience could actually see her face in Dune Part 2 instead of being covered in 500 layers of fabric. And I started taking them off and I was like, okay, I can leave the chains on, Denis, and I can have tattoos. But other than that, you're not getting a veil. Then again, it's an ego that's thrown out the window when she mentioned being six months pregnant performing a fight scene in Mission Impossible Fallout, having her legs wrapped around Sean Harris's head, and uh, I'll let her, I'll let her say it. And I pull my leg and the biggest fanny fart comes out and he's literally caught between boobs and my um, big tummy. And all I heard was, get me out of here. <laughs> And I, sad enough, said I can't. Just deal with it, I can't move, babes. That's, that's pretty amazing. And I admire her ability to speak up for herself, like when she dealt with an obnoxious co-star. And I remember the next day I walked on and I said, you get off my set. Yes. And I looked at this person and I said, you can F off. I'm gonna work towards a tennis ball. I never wanna see you again. God, who was it? That's all right, it doesn't matter. That's not what this video is about. Although she said it wasn't Tom Cruise or Hugh Jackman, which makes sense because she's worked with both men repeatedly and they're all very cordial in interviews together. That, 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 no. Not going down this rabbit hole. Not gonna get this guy all right. Up. So uniquely, my first impression of Rebecca Ferguson, with the exception of seeing her play Rose the Hat in Dr. Sleep, well, hi there. was watching interviews with her and just being drawn to her candor and then being impressed and fascinated with the trajectory of her career. Rebecca started out as the lead on a Swedish soap opera, Nya Tide? I think I'm saying that right. She was 15 years old. And for those of you who don't know, the closest thing to a nine to five job in the acting world is a soap opera. It's a gauntlet. And because I was the lead, I had to run in between. So I rehearsed then shot, then rehearsed then shot, and shot and rehearsed. It was an intense learning skill in, in learning lines and crying very fast. And Rebecca was shooting two and a half episodes a day. How is that possible? But hey, it helped her learn the ropes and develop a strong work ethic. After 54 episodes of Nyantida and 122 episodes of another soap opera, Ocean Avenue, Rebecca had her first big break and a Golden Globe nomination when she got the lead role in the period drama miniseries, The White Queen. She played real-life historical figure Elizabeth Woodsville, who rises from commoner to royalty during a series of turbulent civil wars for the throne of England. If you come one step closer, I will cut my throat and die right here. Play acting. I'm sorry if I've misled you in my coming here, but I will not be your mistress. I could take that from you in a single second. Not before I slice Stop my it. throat. As Elizabeth, her main goal is protecting and securing the lives of her children. This was the start of a series of roles throughout Rebecca's career in which she would play strong maternal figures. I mean, in this case, you gotta be strong if you're giving birth seven times throughout the miniseries. Seven birth scenes. <laughs> Rebecca would go on to play a king's daughter who enlists the help of a demigod. You're welcome. To fight a war in Hercules. Ah, forgive me, I forgot. No mortal can harm Hercules. And uh, your lion's hide is indestructible? Drink, son of Zeus. Do you think it was Dwayne who yelled at her? I mean, he publicly came out and denounced whoever did it, but that could have been a way to get ahead of the story. And this is like, this is like 2013, 2014, Dwayne. Early on in his career, he's still kind of not quite confident enough to yell at, and eh, moving on, not, not, not important, not important. 
At this point, Rebecca was getting a little restless from roles in what she called horse and sandal movies. That's a pretty good description. I mean, The White Queen, Hercules, another miniseries she did called The Red Tent, they all had an unusually high number of horses and or sandals. So she called her agent and said, quote, do you think we could kick some ass soon? And then from up on high, Thomas Cruz Maypother IV reached out after seeing her in The White Queen and thought she'd be perfect to play disavowed MI6 agent Ilsa Faust in the Mission Impossible franchise. And yes, she got to kick some ass and look super cool and sexy and do spy stuff and said cool James Bond sounding funny jokey stuff. You're Ethan Hunt and that shade is very hard to find. And she's doing kicks and guns and punches and kicking ass and shooting from a sniper rifle with a dress on and sticking her leg out and she, she's straight up blasting fanny farts left and right, man. She was doing it all. <laughs> Ever since Rogue Nation, Rebecca's had a good run challenging herself with all sorts of characters. Hugh Grant, that's a possibility. But she mentioned that whoever it was was number one on the call sheet, and wouldn't that be Meryl Streep for this movie? My God, could it be Meryl Streep? After playing Anna, a loving mother oblivious to her husband's second life in The Girl on the Train, and Jenny Lind, an opera singer who sings for P.T. Barnum in The Greatest Showman, she dipped her toes in the world of sci-fi for the first time as Dr. Miranda North, a British quarantine officer responsible for keeping the ISS crew safe from an alien threat in the film Life. Maybe it was your fault, maybe it was my fault, maybe... I don't know, it doesn't matter, does it? Getting this thing on board was a risk and we knew it from the beginning. Something about this one I thought was interesting is how she described the mental gymnastics of acting in a weightless, well, you know, not really weightless, but a weightless environment. They're all on wires and stuff, sure, but apparently when it's just cutting back and forth between two actors talking, there's a good chance that they're just mimicking floating by moving their asses around on a yoga ball. And she had to keep in mind that because it's a weightless environment, everything pushes off everything else. So if someone hands her an object, she needs to act out the force of the object coming into contact with her by being pushed back slightly. It all sounds ridiculously hard from a technical perspective. I mean, imagine doing a monologue while rubbing your stomach, patting your head, and just like dodging tennis balls. That's what it sounds like. Jake Gyllenhaal. I don't know, man. I think that's my vote. I I've examined a lot of interviews with Rebecca and her male co-stars. She's always laughing and like touchy-feely, kind of flirty sometimes, good vibes. And then every interview with Jake Gyllenhaal is just, I don't know, it's just tense. Like something awful is going to happen. Not important. Moving on. These people have waited for centuries for the Lizan al -Gaib. They see you. They see the signs. More recently, of course, she's been playing Lady Jessica in the Dune franchise, which is such a perfect role for her. I mean, you got another strong maternal figure, and her son is is the, the prince, and then he becomes the leader of the Fremen, and she is communicating with her baby in the womb in the second movie. And she has, like, royalty power, and she has the literal power of using the voice. I mean, Kill him! it really is, like, tailor fit for Rebecca. A mind powerful enough to bridge space and time. But my favorite role of hers is the seductive and terrifying Rose the Hat in Mike Flanagan's adaptation of the sequel to The Shining, Doctor Sleep. Well, hi there. I mean, I love this movie for a whole bunch of reasons. I love Mike Flanagan stuff, but man, she is amazing in this movie. She's the leader of the True Knot, a cult that preys on children with psychic powers to prolong their own lives. No fear. You understand? And Rebecca had a lot of fun with this character, but one scene in particular was hard for her to stomach. When she had to brutally murder Jacob Tremblay's character, it was difficult for her to set aside her own feelings as a mother. Interestingly, she made the decision to incorporate these feelings into the scene by gently shushing and comforting him as she disembowels him. Are you gonna hurt me? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good instinct, and it made the character just that much more horrifying and really satisfying when she just, when, when, when they get her, you know, they, oh man, you just want her to get gone. 
Was it Jacob Tremblay? He's wielded a lot of power in Hollywood for years. I mean, people are afraid of this kid. He buys and sells actors like Rebecca Ferguson every day. Another favorite of mine is her recent role in the Apple TV Plus series Silo, which is something she executive produced as well. And just another cool thing, just from an executive producing aspect, which is kind of a mystery job to me, but she wanted to executive produce it, not for the money, and she didn't want people complaining to her. She just wanted to be part of the creative process. I have no idea what I'm doing, okay? I came up here because of George, and the only thing I figured out is that the man that I love, he lied and he used me, and I just still want to find out why he got killed. So Silo is based on a series of books. It's a sci-fi series about a group of 10,000 plus humans living in a presumably post-apocalyptic world, having adjusted to it by living for generations in a self-sustaining underground silo. Rebecca played Juliet Nichols, the engineer that keeps the place running. And you know, there's this like hierarchy system, you know, the people on the top, you know, they really run things and they're all like, they got nice places to live. And then Rebecca lives just the on the very bottom, in the down deep. And they're, you know, they're like the blue collar people. So Juliet finds herself unexpectedly becoming the sheriff and attempts to unravel the mysteries of the silo, solving murders and navigating through political intrigue to do so. It's another departure. And although she kicks a little ass here and there, she does this excellent job playing a character who's learned to distance herself from people and she's uncomfortable with her emotions. You ever seen Dead person, yeah, my brother when I was 12, my mother when I was 13, you know. <laughs> You knew that, sir. I also like this, just this little bit where she touches a baby, but it kind of freaks her out. It's definitely the opposite of maternal. Wait a minute. Rebecca was number one on the call sheet for Silo. Maybe the actor who chewed her out on set was herself. Maybe she's a victim of her own self-hatred and criticism. Well, besides being a stupid idea, that's impossible. If there's one thing I've learned from watching Rebecca's performances, interviews, everything, it's that she's this confident, easygoing person who clearly doesn't give a shit about what people think of her. And people are just drawn to her. It's like, it goes to show you that the camera never lies. When honesty comes through, the audience can tell. We're just, we're attracted to it. I think that's the deal with good old Beckford. Like innocent baseball boys drawn to strange fans. Okay, that's, not, that's a bad comparison like moths to a flame. How about that? There's just something about her that we want to keep seeing.